Hey, good morning. I made it. Okay. okay here we go. Oh, God. Okay, so we're talking about uh, mainly what we want to get into is the 40 letter name of God. But we're doing it in the context of what's going on this year, this month, this time of year, which is Sfirah to Omer and the counting of the Omer. So first, I have to give a little bit of background um, in terms of Sfirah to Omer and what the mitzvah is. It basically brings down that every single night, at nighttime, at nightfall, and you have to wait for three stars to come out. And then you have to do it when you're standing. And you say a blessing. If you've been from the beginning night, the first night, which is the second night of Passover, all the way through, you're, you're able to say a blessing. And there's many laws that go into if you missed. And if you missed, you should still count. You just count without a blessing. But the idea here is that we're counting, okay? Every single night until Shavuot, until the holiday of the giving of the Torah. And we have to just get a little bit of a background um, that the idea of really it's 49 days and the 50th we don't count because that is the cosmic, that's the cosmic space where there is no count, okay? There is always the, the idea or the energy field where there's no more words, okay? No more things to count. And so that's what, why we're, we're, we're going progressively. And there's a lot of questions. A lot of people ask a lot of things about it. And we're just going to touch a little tips of the iceberg. But I just have to give you like a basic rundown of what it is that we're doing. And then we're going to get into what it more cosmically, what we're doing. Now, interestingly enough, if you see on the sheets, I think I brought it. Uh, let me shrink this. Oh, I shrunk the wrong thing. Okay, here we go. Right. So the Sphere to Omer, I brought you on the sheets. It's really complicated, but I was trying to get like an art scroll of something. Of an art scroll, it's much more simpler. And this is definitely not according to the, 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 the because I pulled it off the internet. But as you see, we are counting 49 nights. And interestingly enough, even in the Ashkenaz Siddur, the, the prayer book of the white man, okay? Not the Sephardic. The Sephardic, they have what's called the Shem Yehud Kudshah Brihu. They have this prayer, which is for the sake of the unification of the Holy One, blessed be he, and the Shekinah. They have it all throughout the Siddur. They have it before every mitzvah. But if you look at the classic Ashkenaz Siddur, right? The Ashkenaz Siddur usually doesn't want to, they don't have it, except for two places you'll find it. One is before Sfirah to Omer, before the counting of the Omer, which is what we're doing every night. And the second is before the shaking of the Lula. But usually, because like, you know, these, I, had, I hate to say it, sometimes, you know, the Ashkenazim are, are more intellectual. They don't, they don't dig on things that they can't fully grasp or understand. The Svartim, of course, they have what's called simple faith. And they just are totally in a different uh, sink, a different energy zone. And so on the second page that I have in the sheets there, it has this, I am ready and prepared. I'm prepared and ready to perform the affirmative command to count the omen. As it is written in the Torah, and you shall count for yourselves from the day after the day of rest, which is really the day after Pesach. It's a weird why they word it that way. From the day you bring the Omer as a wave offering, seven complete weeks shall there be until the day following the seventh week. You shall count 50 days. Interesting, we don't count the 50th day. And you shall bring, because the day itself is a count, and you shall bring a new meal offering unto Hashem. And then we have a blessing, Baruch Ata Hashem, and we say, Okay, so the idea here is that this mitzvah that we're doing is 
successively every single day and to make this count until you bring a new meal up. And the idea here of the Omer is, which is what we're going to get into, is really a, a, a measure of barley. Barley, every single day, people are bringing the new Okay? Every single day, people are bringing a barley off until Shavuot. And Shavuot is actually brought a wheat offering. Barley is always associated with animal food. And of course, we're successively moving out of Egypt and we're working on, we're doing some kind of tikkun every single day as we head into the holiday of Shavuot. And we're bringing this like, like animal food. So obviously what it is, is, is we're shedding the animalistic part of ourselves, the base part of ourselves, the negative aspects of ourselves. But it's interesting how it's not really the languages. And they, always, they all ask this question is, why isn't it going like when you're looking forward to something? Like, you know, I'm 20 more days till my birthday or 10 more days till the wedding or till, you know, till I go to Disneyland, right? No, I'm not going to. I got kicked out of Disney. Remember that, okay? The only rabbi in the world, that's right, who got kicked out of Disney. Okay? In any case, a few more days, a few more days, right? Only a few more days, right? So why should it be the opposite? Why is it like one progression after another? Why is it today is like the first day of the Omer? Today is the second day of the Omer. Today is the third day. Today is the 20th. By the way, today, today is actually uh, Pesach Sheni, what we call it. Pesach Sheni, Passover, second Passover. Mm, that's right. It's called Pesach Sheni. It's kind of like a holiday. And the holiday, really, we will eat matzah. And in those days, though, as we know, that what happened was there were people who couldn't come to offer the Passover offering in the temple on the 15th day of Nisan, which is when Passover really was. They were too far, they were not clean, whatever idea, they weren't able to bring it. And they came to Moses and they go, yeah, it's not right, Shane. I wanna bring it, we wanna, you know, why should we uh, be uh, left out? And so the law was, okay, well, we got a second day of Passover for you. We got an extra day. It's the only holiday this is a pretty deep idea here, where you get a second chance. And what's the second chance on? The second chance on Emuna. You get always get a second chance for that connection. And the connection is the core Emuna, which is what we work on. And so really, though, here you are, you're working by, so Pesach Sheni is today. And it happens to be this week is the week of Hod, which I'll explain soon, which is a really a dynamic week. Okay. In any case, right, even though Ashkenaz can't handle it, for the sake of the Holy One, blessed be he and his Shekhinah, this L'Shem Yichud, as we say, this special mitzvah, it's in the Siddur anyway. Some say it, some don't say it, right? They can't, they have to, some people have to keep moving. And so when we say the blessing, then we say what day it is. And then we add, today's the second day. Now, like I showed you before that, and I did it now better for y'all, because y'all had nice questions and they were good questions and they were right questions. I took a black marker and I had to put, these are the 10 spherot. Now, as we know that the 10 spherot are the cosmic genetic code of all creation. Hashem made the world with 10 statements. Every single thing you can see throughout the entire I books of Moses is 10s. You have 10 tests of Abraham. You have the 10 commandments. You have the 10 plagues in Egypt. And you have 10 statements of creation. 10s are, we like the 10. 10 is good for us, right? Baby step 10s. These are the garments where Hashem where, so to speak, in terms of his interacting with creation. It is within us, the form of our very bodies. It is within everything and without everything. Your conversations, the Baal Shem Tov says. When you're conversing with someone, 
even if it's about some something mundane, physical, in your mind, you have to go ahead and try to connect it to the sphere of what you're talking about. It's a dynamic idea, dynamic insight that, that you can go ahead and elevate your conversations in which we are all working to in terms of getting more mindful, okay? But that's a level. So we have here the 10 spheroids. And I said, just like you're here having the macro, the 10 sphero, in the micro is also 10 spherot, okay? So in, within each of every sphera, and if you don't know the names, I will help you. I'll try to remember. And if not, you can always interrupt me and say, what's that again? No problem. This is Keter. This is Crown. This is Wisdom. Hachma. This is Bina. This is Understanding. There's a line here which basically means that these three spherot are mental spherot, more associated with the mind. And here are the lower seven spherot, which we associate with more with emotions, or qualities. This is called kindness, chesed, love. This is called uh, gvura, power, or discipline. The ability to say no. Yes. How well can you say no? Some people say yes when they should really say no. I'm, we're all learning. This is kindness, love. This is power or like no discipline. This is tiferet beauty, which is basically the combination of these two, the right balance, also called balance or beauty. This is called dominance or netzach in Hebrew. This is called hod. This is the week of hod, by the way. And then, as we know that this Thursday is Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's yard site, is Hilula, as they say. And he is the day, well, we'll get to it, Hod Shibahod. Anyways, and here we have Yesod, which is foundation, or what I call commitment. That's my nickname. That's, that's how I name it, because it really means you're just totally committed to Malkut. You're totally committed to bringing all, and the way that the lights as we understand in Kabbalah, the light, the infinite light flows from Keter, the Chachma, the Bina, the kindness, the Gevura, to Feret, Netzach, Hod, Yesod, and finally, all the lights funnel through, through here to Malchut, which is called kingship, which is like total acceptance, okay? So here we have this line drawn, because these are the mental, and here are the emotional or we'll call it the midot. There's seven basic midot, essential characters, which somebody can mute, please, um, just to ask everybody again. The seven ones, now, of course, there's a lot that we say about seven because there are seven days of creation. And also, like the here's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Shabbos. Shabbos is associated with Malchus, so the days of the week we find also. And there were seven holy, righteous tzaddikim who also really brought out a expression from the Ainso, from the infinite, into the world. The special expression of these qualities. As we know, let's say day one, or chesed, kindness, love is Abraham. Day two was Yitzchak, the son of Abraham. You notice how Abraham, Yitzchak was very, I don't, you don't want to say recluse, but not very many verses written about him. Okay. It's stuff, but he was more his area of how he expressed his serving God was more like a disciplinary kind of uh, energy. Yaakov, Jacob, is balance. He took from both of them and he had the right balance. Netzach, or we call dominance, is Moshe. Hod, which is uh, splendor, or we call it empathy, is Aaron, Aaron, the brother of Moses. Yesod is Joseph, because Joseph, he was very committed. You mean, Potiphar was this this non-jewish woman was chasing after him i see it in the stars and he's like they ain't my stars so anyways he was like no i'm committed i'm not going to do this and he didn't sin and he committed himself and because of that he became the conduit of all of the energy actually in, in the physical the fee he fed the world 
through him the world was fed. And then finally, Malchut, which is kingship, which is King David. That, that basically doesn't really have any light of her own. She just receives and then creates something new from it, okay? And so going into the spherot and the counting, I drew a line over these because we're not involved in the mental right now. We're working on fixing the lower seven spherot. And the lower seven spherot, that's why there's a line, there's seven sets of seven, which equal 49, okay? And so each one of these has a name, just like I called these a name in the macro. This is kindness, this is, this is discipline, this is beauty. Also in the micro, there, each one has the exact same name. In other words, let's say day one. Day one of counting of the Omer would be chesed, chesed or kindness of kindness. One point energy here. And then the next day would be Gevura of kindness or power, discipline of kindness. The next one is beauty of kindness. The next one is uh, dominance of kindness, um, empathy of kindness, kindness of empathy, and then finally kingship of empathy, a kind kingship of kindness, sorry. And this one starts with Gevura, and you have kindness of Gevura, and then you'll have a Gevura of Gevura, power of power, or discipline of discipline. And then you'll have each day has its name. And that's why you'll see on the charts there, I hope they're there, right? When it counts here on the, on the column where it says the sphera, on the far left columns of both of those, then it says what it is. It's in Hebrew, but I'll translate it just like what I said. So every single day has its name, has its energy that's being fixed. It's almost like an automatic fix, but we take a huge partnership in this very big partnership in this. so will you go all the way down to let's say what to today is right that today is chesed shiba hod which is number where is it number number where is it number 29 okay really i think we're not in 29 anymore i forgot okay uh, someone tell me what day it is we are, okay? Um, so we are in what's called Chesed Shebehot. Happens to be pa Passover Shani, the second day of Passover. And so we move in a seven and a seven day cycle sets of, sets of seven, and we count every single day. And those days correspond to these spherot and this. Now, what are we doing with it? It doesn't make sense to me. And a lot of people try to go ahead and figure out and say in you know, YouTube videos, what's the energy of this day and what to focus on? And those are great if you could do it, if you can understand it. And there are some books and some texts written about it that are pretty cool. However, it's, sometimes it's too much for us to grasp. So we're gonna talk about just saying it has a tremendous powerful effect. So the idea here is of the why, why are we going down this, right? Why are we in a white and we're and we're not counting down to the giving of the Torah, which is the wedding day. Did you know that? It's the wedding day of the Jewish people. I've told you this before. It's really great um, imagery or paradigm, okay? That we say on the first night of Passover was the light of, of God was so revealed, it was so magnified. It was, you know, the, the, the light was like the equivalent to the first statement of creation where God said, let there be light. And on that night, it was compared to what we'll call Cinderella going to the ball because Jewish people were Cinderella. And the para was the step, wicked stepmother, and wicked she was. And the Egyptian people were the wicked stepsisters. No, Cinderella, you can't go to the ball. Right. And here the Jewish people are kind of like, OK, so Moses comes and he introduces uh, through all the plagues, finally gets to the point where it's Passover night. We are participating in this huge influx of light and energy beyond. But it only lasts one day. It only lasts the first day of Passover. Because after that no lights, the lights out. 
And then what happens is we go out of Egypt and we go through the Red Sea and we're going through all the way till Passover. Now, I'm just going to throw this at you because I think it's pretty cool. Is that, of course, as we know in the story of Cinderella, that she leaves that glass slipper, right? And the prince says, like, we have to find who, who, oh, who fits the slipper, right? There's no other nine and a halfs or, or nines in all of Egypt. That's it, right? Nobody is a size nine. Okay, eight, eight, nine, whatever. Okay, in any case, work with me here. There's a midrash which says that God went around to all of the nations of the entire world, the 70 nations, offering them the Torah. It says, do you guys want the Torah? And you probably know how the midrash goes. <laughs> it goes that all of the nations says, well, what's in it? So God says, well, it says, uh, thou shalt not kill, right? And they go, I'm sorry, murder is our way of living. We have to kill. I don't kill. This is not a day, right? So Asaph said, you know, it says, thou shalt not kill. And Asaph says, no, it doesn't fit us. And they went to Yishmoel and it says, thou shalt not steal. And they're going, you know, it's not our, that, that doesn't fit because a day is not a day if I don't steal, right? And don't be promiscuous. And every single nation basically saw what was, it was about and refused it until, past, uh, until Shavuot night, the night of the giving of the Torah. That's when it fit. The shoe fit, okay? So God went around to all the nations trying on the shoe and it didn't fit. It didn't fit. It fit the Jewish people. Okay, and that's when the wedding happened, right? It's like get the priest, let's go wedding now. Get the rabbi, chuppah, let's do this. Okay, so once again, we're not counting down, which seems like we should, but we're counting up. And it goes to this something very kabbalistic and in deep uh, wisdom. We know that before the creation, I'm just going to do this quickly for you all. The arrangement of the spherot, I didn't put all the spherot down, I just put a bit in just to show you the idea of before all of creation, Hashem arranged these vessels, but he arranged in a way that they were in a straight line, the seven lower vessels. Okay, he arranged the seven vessels, and these are, are called the seven primordial kings, and it's actually written about in Parsha's told us where it mentions that there are seven kings that ruled in Israel before that ruled before there was a king in Israel. And that's a whole hint. And there's big books written about it, about these, this cataclysmic events are called the shattering of the vessels. And God did it for a reason, of course. And he arranged these vessels, call them ways to grasp infinity. And he arranged them in such a way that when the light came down from Keter to Chachma to Bina, these were in an, a three-column arrangement, and then it went into here, which is called Dot, really, and all of the light went into Dot, and Dot not only got its light, but got all the lights of all of the other vessels after it. He took for himself and everything else, and because that was too much light, he exploded, crashed, and bombed, Okay. A lot of crash and burns here. And then the light then went down here, crashed and burned, got too much light all the way down. Each one of the vessels shattered into the lower worlds, into also our world that we are experiencing today. And they are what we call the holy sparks that are in all of matter and that we have to elevate those sparks. Now, the idea here is why I'm saying this is because this was the arrangement before. And this is the arrangement after. That the arrangement after, after God wanted to go ahead and rebuild everything, he rebuilt it in what we call the three column array, not one column, but the three column array. And the three column array is for a reason, is because of this exactly, that each one has within it a piece of someone else. Each one of these kings now has what's called they're fused together 
each one intermingle, that because they need each other to go ahead and make a what we call a full part suf, that's Kabbalistic terminology, a part suf is a whole set of 10 in this arrangement. Okay, that's called a part suf. Part suf in Hebrew literally means face. I, I, but really the way that the, only the Kabbalists understand it, they don't translate it as face. You can kind of make maybe come up with something and email me what you come up with. But once it became like this, and it's intermingled, so that means it's including every single sphera is included one every single every single other sphera. My father-in-law used the example of a salad. That's right. Let's say, for example, this guy is tomatoes. This guy's lettuce. This guy's avocados. This guy is uh, uh, red onions. No, you don't like red onions. Okay, olives. And this is maybe green peppers, and this is whatever vegetables. Each one has a big stack of tomatoes. This one has lettuce. By themselves, they're really not a salad. But when they mix and blend and exchange with each other, so then you have the Caesar salad, right? Then you have the ultimate salad, okay? Or seven salads, right? Salads to choose from. I can't. I'll get the Greek salad, okay? So in any case... Um, us counting these, listen, us counting these, we are participating, we are co-creating the tikkun, the rectification of creation by counting on the first day. Today is the first day of the Omer. It is chesed shebechesed, kindness of kindness. And today is, let's say we're down here. Today is the first day of the week of Hod, of empathy. It is um, kindness. It is kindness of empathy. And today is Gevura. And we go all the way to empathy of empathy. And each one. So in other words, we are like kind of gathering. We are participating in putting together the set. Okay? It's a tremendous thing. Okay? even though you don't necessarily understand it. It's just, you just got to say it as we're going to talk about like right now, okay? So we have here also, just want to let you know that we'll hopefully we'll get into, um, if not this year, there's always next year, there's always Psalm 67, right? That's the ultimate cure, that's the ultimate Psalm. After you say, you, and you have to do it when you're standing, and after you say the Sefer to Omer, tonight is the, such a such a night of the Omer. You say this Harachaman Hu Yachazir Lano Beis Avodas Beis Amigdash Leim Komi Bin Heiro Biyamein Asalav. That maybe the Merciful One uh, return to us our service in the Holy Temple in its place very speedily. We always say that line after because we don't have a temple. We're not really the ultimate tikkun would be to bring these animal food offerings because we're elevating the animal food offerings and we're blending everything together. We don't have that. But after you say that, um, the Nusach, the text in the Siddur and in your Siddur, and if someone could take a picture of the art school, it would be great just to get the English so everybody would have it and send it to me. Because I'm here in California and I don't have an art school Siddur in my house. Lam Natsayak bin Ginos Mizmor Shir, actually, Psalm 67. Psalm 67, the reason why we say that actually, is because also there are 49 words in that psalm, 49 corresponding to the 49 nights that we count the Omer. And then also, and we do try to, we do say it in a menorah, and hopefully I'll get a form of the menorah for you. And also the middle line, which is the middle stalk of the candelabra, that very verse, right? Which is Yismichu Virananu Leomim Kitishpot Amim Mishor Ulum Yubarat Samim Zalah has 49 letters in it. So the whole thing is 49 letters. And the middle stock has 49, oh, 49 words, sorry, the whole Tehillim. And the middle stock has 49 letters. 49 is a very significant number because it's 42 plus seven. Okay. And then we say the Anabakoach. And the Anabakoach, of course, is like I, we have to get into this meditation. And I've spoke about it before, that you really got to try to connect to it as much as possible. And even though that we might have 
and, and we can good and we can get into the meaning and i'm going to god willing take you into the meaning of it because there's, there's seven as we said here i think i did it in this sheet here Woo yeah okay so we have of the seven sphere out each one has a name in it now i think uh someone asked me last week um that we say baruch shame at the end if you'll see it in the sheets that i said the last thing is because we're saying a very holy name and if you'll see in the sheets that i handed to you if you know the hebrew at least you could see it that the first letters are dark of every single one of those lines because those are the essential letters of the 42 letter name of god now the 42 letter name of god is like very very powerful it speaks about it all through the Zohar, as I'm going to share something with you today. God. That the 42 letter name we spoke about last week was that there are basically um, 40, 32 times that God is mentioned in the very first chapter of Genesis. Along with the, five, the fact that it says and there's, there's 10 statements where and God said. So those 10 statements of God said is another 10. So there's 32 plus 10 is 42, okay? Plus it also hints to, if you look at the first 42 letters of the very first chapter of Genesis, this first order ends, starts with a bait and ends with a bait, okay? You can count the 42 letters, okay? 42 is a very significant number. And we spoke last week or two weeks ago that 42, our lives are 42. Our very lives are 42 because a person goes through 42 places and they're not physical places 42 places of his life 42 stages and there are certain stages where it's tough sudden stages where it's great right and it depends upon us and our vessel and us to become the vessel to receive the light the insight the connection of whatever it is that's being offered in that stage of your life. And if it goes a little bit where you don't understand what's going on, we say that we brought from Rashi last week, that, that God shows us at the end, every single one of us, at the end of our lives, maybe 120 healthy and happy, that he shows us at the end, he says, and he shows us each one of those 42 places, how he was developing us perfectly. And we were, it was all for us because God doesn't need any. He only wants to give. And the only wants that we should be receptacles for the infinite life. So those 42 are very important. Okay. So this is the 42 because it's each one has six letters in it and six times seven. And after we say all, all of those names, then we say Baruch Shem. Because Baruch Shem is really an expression. It's an amazing expression when you say Baruch Shem. When do we say Baruch Shem? After we say the Shema, we say Baruch Shem. And really, if you'll know, it's on Yom Kippur. When you're in the, in the, in the in your synagogue at Yom Kippur and they're going, and the uh, Chazan, the prayer master, is going over all of the, um, the service of the, Kohen, of the high priest on Yom Kippur. And then there's a certain place, it depends on what synagogue you're in, but many synagogues. And it says, and the high priest says, when he said the ineffable name of God, we bowed down, we prostrated, and we fell on our faces, and we say, So in other words, when you get the insight of a revelation, boom, right? He's that big. What's your reaction? <sighs> Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Just, just one more, more. And the, the experience is overwhelming. Where in the temple to hear the name of God was so overwhelming. Whatever that experience would be, we're kind of out of touch now. The experience was overwhelming. We just bow down and going that whoa. It's a big whoa. So Baruch shame is like another way of going whoa, dude. Okay. So in any case, 
that's why we say Baruch Shem at the end. Okay, this actually just to throw in something else out at you about the 42 letter. This is actually according to some opinions. This was the name that Moses used to kill the Egyptian man. When, you know, he was uh, trying to save somebody, uh, a Jewish guy from getting beat up seriously by an Egyptian man. It says Moses looked this way and that way. He saw there was no, nothing good was going to come out of this dude. And so he said a name of God, right? It wasn't like uh, Cecil B. DeMille where he strangles uh, Vincent Price. Uh, it was, and that was Vincent Price, by the way. Okay. And where it was, he said a name of God and the guy, his soul left his body. So there's lots of power in this name. Okay, now we say it in a kosher way. This prayer was written by Nehunia ben Hakana, who was this great sage that we spoke about last week. He was always in this kind of unbelievable out-of-body trance up in the throne of glory. His physical body was down here, but the soul was up there. They needed to ask him a question like who gets to go in and who doesn't get to go in. They had to take this claw from this woman, lightly touched it, put it on him, and then he says, like, who dares awake me from my slump? So... And then they ask them the questions. So we have here this, the, the seven sets, right, of uh, seven sets of six letters. And we have to understand that even though, let me say, you, you, you're not really, listen, I've been saying this for like how many years? And I'm, every single time I'm trying to reconnect with what it means. And you might just, you know, it's, it's work. This is like practice. This is our Kung Fu. Yes, this is our Kung Fu. And just to give you the other insight into it, to focus on the letters in your mind's eye, or you can have this chart here on your fridge or wherever, don't put it in the bathroom, that you can focus on the letters if you can remember the prayer, which is, please, Hashem, in the power of your, your right hand, release those who are in prison, including myself and all of us. All of our souls are in prison. That's day one. Day two is, is I, can, I don't want to say the name as it is written, but those are the only really two legible uh, words is in day two, is in this one. We don't say it outright, okay? Because we do not, we're not on the level, okay? We say it in Kabel Rinas Amcha, which really the literal meaning of these two words is rip the Sutton, rip the Satan, rip the, 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 the negative forces, right? And the other ones really, all of the other names, they don't have really have any words that are consistent in Hebrew. It's just basically random letters. The reason why I'm saying this is because the Baal Shem Tov's um, technique of meditation is to focus on the letters, try to get the letters to shine as much as you can in your mind's eye. And if it's not in your mind's eye, you just do it. It's just, I'm sorry, it's just do it, you know? Can you teach a guy to ride a bicycle? You guys just gotta do it, okay? And just try to get the letters as you say them to shine as bright as you possibly can. So, and then of course, each letter combines with the other, but you just, just work on that, okay? Just to get those letters to shine. Because the letters are energy, the letters are vibration. We say the Hebrew letters are the primordial energy fields of creation beyond science. This is creational science, okay? One day they'll get to this, maybe. I don't think so. Some people say they won't, but, you know, the, 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 the paradigm that they give is, you know, the, the scientists are climbing this huge mountain and finally when they get to the summit to understand all of reality, you know, there's the Kabbalists are going to be sitting there roasting marshmallows, look back and like, what took you so long? Okay, because we're already there. It's already there. We have the Torah. Okay. And so, even if you don't understand, let's say, the, the meaning of these, just to try to get into the vibration of the letters, as we're going to go to right next. Okay. Question. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't understand uh, exactly. Uh, are the letters that are highlighted, the dark letter, there are, they say the 42 letter name of God? That's right. When and, you're saying it in this prayer form, you're actually saying those letters. 
and the letter okay. when you like starting with uh number uh let's see on my list here the first letter is it in uh where you say chapter nine of the helium or is it, is it above it where there's an aleph bet uh, it's the aleph bet i don't know chapter 67 of the hill and that's a different thing Folk okay so, all right I'm, I'm looking at your handout and i'm i my my handout that you're giving me is chapter 29 to Hillam. Oh, that's next. We'll get to that. We'll okay, get to that so, right now. So, so you're getting these 42 letters from the big chart. Is that right? The big chart. Yeah, from the first chart, it's there underneath that chart. You see it's right there in the dark letters. Where it says Harahaman Hu Yahazir. After that paragraph, after that, you'll see there's like uh, six sets of seven letters, and they're in the parentheses, the seven letters, as you have written here. And then you'll have the words right next to it, in the, and those are dark letters. And those dark letters are each one of those six letters. Okay, and does do the, do the words that make up these 42 letters, are they certain words, or are they just letter energies? Well, they're also energies, because they were written by a huge Kabbalistic state. But are there words? Do these 42 letters combinations make words no except for like what i told you the second day makes words this day here has words in it we don't say the words we actually say these also in a um, in like the same form of the 42 letter names before to kid shofar before we blow the shofar and rosh hashanah we say this name we're not allowed to say it as it is written but those are the only that's the only one that has words okay. maybe a little bit in the third day, but not All really. Right, so this is really what you're doing is this is a more explanation of the Anabekoach prayer. Yes. Okay. Okay. One last question. When you gave us the um, seven tzaddikim that you matched up with the Sphero, uh, was Abraham Chesed? Did you take Yes, Abraham? he's kindness. Yes. And what was Yitzchak? Yitzchak is discipline. Number two, Vura, actually, they say, or power was uh was yes, yitzchak, yitzchak was gavura yes okay yaakov uh, was so tiferet. yitzchak uh, was gavura and yaakov was what tiferet beauty oh okay and then moshe would be netzach dominance like moshe comes down from the mountain and he goes you got to do this okay and, and Aharon was Hod? Empathy, yes, Hod. They also translate that as splendor. Okay. Really, I think Rabbi Kaplan translated it as empathy, which makes more sense who Aaron was. He was able to make peace because he would hear this person and he would hear this person. He would allow that person, you know, and each one of the things that in, in the creation also was an expression of that energy. But such as, let's say, the first day of creation, God said, let there be light. So that's chesed, that's kindness. Okay. Jump down to this week of, of hod, of splendor, empathy. This was the first creation on that day, or the fifth day of creation, where God created the birds and the fish, which basically the only creations, the first creations to have complete free will movement, free movement. The birds fly everywhere and the fish swimming anywhere. They didn't have like, as we have the, uh, the, the, uh, the sun and the moon and the stars, which only have a very limited uh, orbit. So they, you know, and the plants and the trees, which created the third day also, they, they don't move. Anyway, so just to give you an idea, there's much more to, to develop in terms of understanding the spherot. Um, and of course, I said that uh, Yesod, or was foundation, which is it's called foundation, literally, or commitment, which is Yosef, and then finally King David, which is Malchut, who is the king. So I have to go now on a little bit more because this is really dynamic that I happen to be reading. You know, I read Kune Zohar a lot, and then I get to a point, I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. So there's a passage in the Tikune Zohar, actually in Tikkun Samech Tet uh, 69. And it speaks about a hevel, a vapor. Okay, hevel actually was the first, was the son of Adam, Kain and hevel. Interesting how his name was hevel. Okay, 
Havel actually, just to give you a little background information, Havel actually reincarnated, he got killed by his brother. Havel reincarnated into Shait, Shait, who is the third son of Adam. And then Shait reincarnated into Moses. Moses was a reincarnation of Havel, okay? He fixed Havel. Cain, on the other hand, also, he had several reincarnations. Um, most of them uh, troublesome, like the heir of Rav, who are existing this day. We, Hashem, should help them and bring them out of their mud. But uh, Cain, the ultimate tikkun of Cain, is um, the father-in-law of Moses, whose name was Yitro, who was, had a nickname called Caini, Kufnun Yud. He rectified Cain, okay? Because he did tshuva, he came into the fold, he became a religious Orthodox Jew, okay? So he rectified Cain. Anyways, just to tell you that, little background. Hevel, so the Tikkune Zohar speaks about, there's a certain from the side of the right of Hevel, Highness, because there's good air and there's bad air, won't you admit? Yes, sure, after you had that beef and cheese burrito, there's lots of bad air, aren't you? Okay? <laughs> So in any case, the hevel misidrodimina. There is a hevel. There is an air from the side of the right, which includes seven airs, seven vapors. I'm going to call them vapors because it's just easier to say. And these seven vapors are the anabakoaf, and it says it right here. The forty-two letter name of God are the seven airs, right? There's six, really, it's six plus one. But anyways. These are, we call, he calls, the Tikkuni Zohar calls it the six rings plus the seventh. And the six rings are basically in a person's body. There are different places where, where words get cut, okay? And, and a sound gets cut. There are really five rings in the throat. There are different letters. There, if you divide the letters, let's bring them down and say for Yitzira. If you divide the letters, into um, five sets, five sets of, of letters. Because some letters are lip letters, some letters are tongue letters, some letters are dental letters, some letters are throat letters. So those are the rings that which basically cut the, a, the, 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 um, the vapor, the air, and the voice, okay, to make a letter, to put it into a word that somehow goes into your brain and your ears and you translate it into your brain and gets reconfigured and you get a sentence. Just amazing how it, things work, right? We take too much for granted. In any case, let's get into this, okay? So he calls it the seven vapors, and the seven vapors, right? These are raised basically corresponding to the uh, Psalm 629. First, let's get into the first verse here of Kohelet. The first verse of Kohelet, which most, makes most people depressed, is, I divrei Kohelet ben David, Melech Yerushalayim, these are the words of Kehelet, the son of David, king of Jerusalem. Havel havalim amar Kohelet, ha, havel havalim hakol hev. Right? Vanity of vanity. Oh, right? Or vexation of vexation. Right? Or whatever you want to say it. Or air of airs. A vapor of vapors. Basically, everybody reads this and gets depressed because everything is just vapor. Okay, thank you very much. Might as well just throw in the towel and just call it a day. So, but it's much bigger than that. And there are many other understandings of this because if you read this, you get so depressed. But uh, I'll just throw this at you. The Kedushas lady explains this verse to help us. That basically you're saying vanity of vanities, says Kohelet, the vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Those last three words, all is vanity, meaning to say everything is vanity is also vain. In other words, it, it has a meaning, the meaning that God gives. So don't get depressed. In a more Kabbalistic sense, we have to count the, these vapors in this sense. See, Havel, Hevel, or vanity, is one, and vanities, plural, is two. So if you have to add the, the times that it says in this verse, how many airs, how many vapors are there? There's a vapor, Havel, Havalim. Havalim is two. So we have two plus one is three. Amar Kohel, it says Kohel. Havel Havalim, Havel is one. Havalim is plural, two. So we have six. Hakol Hevel, seven. So if you count the times of the Hevels first, you end up with seven airs. Okay? 
And the, the, and the Tikkuni Zohar says, these are the seven vapors. These vapors are not to be taken lightly. As you're going to see from the Ari, I'm like I, towards the end of the class and I got, what am I doing? I, everything was to get to this, okay? But just to throw this at you, because we're, we're going to move, a, you know, uh, I'm going to move to the point that I need to make. That it says here, those seven vapors are also corresponding to Psalm 29. And I hear I underline it only in Hebrew. I'm sorry. I should have done it in English, but it was 2 a.m. last night. Okay. Which is verse 3 says, Kol Hashem. And we do this when we put the Sefer Torah away. By the way, if you're on Shabbos, right? This nigun maybe is a we're familiar because each one of these coals represents the seven coal. Now, a coal is more of a, not a vapor. There are three things that come out of our mouths. Air, simply, that we don't really pay attention to. Coal, a voice. A voice is just, ah. And then there's a word. There's vapor, air voice and word. So here he brings it to just a whole nother level about what are these voices and that we're going to see how our saying these 42 letter name of God, what it does. Okay. The idea here is to sweeten the judgments. This period of time is a time where it's almost the, the, the windows, the cosmic windows are open. And judgments come in. The judgments are flowing. This is why 24,000 students of Rebbe Kiva died in this time. Why I got such a long beard. It's called the Omer beard. Right? No haircuts, no weddings. <laughs> kind of like in a morning state. Quasi-morning. No live music. Right? So, because why? There's 24,000 of these unbelievable students died in this time. The dinim, the judgments are being rained upon. Now, it's up to us to fix those. And we can. And it's so simple. Sometimes Hashem gives you a simple formula. And that's what the Arizal brings down right here. I brought it in Hebrew, okay, that he says explicitly in Shar Kavana. This is the gates of focus, I guess, uh, gates of Kavana. Kavana is direction, right? What you meditate on, what you think, what you contemplate. And I kind of like did a quick two o'clock in the morning translation. However, I'm going to read this. However, the reason a person needs to count the Omer with his mouth, it's not enough just the mind. It's not enough just to say, oh, my friend did it. It's not enough to just say, ah, it was done in uh, Shu, right? With his mouth, you must do it. And if you didn't say a bracha all this time, does, don't worry about it. Don't say a bracha. Stand up and say, today is the 28th or 29th day of the Omer. Okay? And just saying it, I'm telling you, the, there's these correspond to this, actually are also going up with the vapor of the seven, of the 42-letter name of God. Don't forget, those 42-letter name of, of God are the seven heirs that the world cannot exist without. Now, I remember seeing many years ago, this little video that was speaking actually on Tisha B'Av about these uh, weather scientists that were you know, calculating all kinds of the airs and the winds that go around the world. And they were got all the configurations and the detailed science in terms of numbers. And they decide they wanted to do an experiment to see what would happen if they would just cut the last two digits of a 15 digit sequence of the winds. And there's if they just altered the last number or the last two numbers, I don't remember it. And they says, you know, what difference is that going to make? Just to let's just make it 13 digit sequence and not a 15 digit sequence. The, 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 they said, you know, the, the, the amount of air of those last two digits. Is like the air that a butterfly makes when it flaps its wings in the, in the meadow. It's not going to make a difference. They did it, and their calculations were, listen to this, their calculations were, and if I find it, I'll send it to you, God willing, and if I forget, please send me an email to send it to you all, because I can find it. It's there. And of course, I don't know if it's true, but it seems to be they made it, and they did this. 
But of course, everything needs to be verified these days. Everything, okay? Everything, everything's vapor. Anyways, so they did a calculation. What's a butterfly, the minus, plus or minus of, of, of the, how much air a butterfly makes? And they calculated that if they didn't have those two things, it would result in tremendous hurricanes and tornadoes in the world, okay? Tremendous hurricanes and tornadoes if you didn't have the flapping of a butterfly. So we, we, we take things in, you know, for granted that how much is that really contributing, right? And the, the, the point here is, is that our very air of just saying today is ho chibaho, today is the 29th day of the Omer, the little vapor that comes out of our mouth, that just that vapor, right? What does it do? It causes above, because everything we do below has a reverberatory effect in the cosmic realm, that it causes a vapor to come from above. And that vapor that comes from above, we call it the surrounding light, an or makif, which we'll have to get into next week, God willing. This or makif, a surrounding light, a brilliant light, a light that basically cannot be grasped, comes down because what we shake a, a rope, make a prayer, a little vapor, okay? Then it comes down and it bleeds back down into this world, a sweetening of the judgments. Everything is about sweetening judgments. Everything. And the little counting that we do on Sirat Omer results in a sweetening of judgments and everybody has to do it. Men, women, women can do it. Okay, some women don't do it. I recommend that if you haven't set up with a bracha now, you can still now start now and just stand up and just say, hey, and that little vapor, that little vapor joins. And that's why we say the Anabakoach after. We say the, set, the 42 letter name of God after because that's the, the big vapor that takes this vapor and all that vapor goes up and it's a lot of vapor. Hopefully it's not with the beef and cheese burrito. Okay, so <laughs> here is... If, don't think the point is don't think oh what's this counting gonna do what god is able to make nuclear fission with household items there's no doubt because really everything is really god the meaning that god gives it god gives us a command to count, just simply count. and in that counting just to recap everything we're doing today we're gathering we're gathering, we're gathering. Today is Chesed Shebechesed. Today is Bevur Shebechesed. Today is Tiferet Shebechesed. And each day, we're putting together the packet. We get to participate. We get to co-create, to be partners with God in creation. Not only to put together the packet, but then again, to sweeten the judgments. All judgments. Now, sit with me. And... All judgments are totally sweet. Now imagine yourself just feeling that feeling for a moment. All judgments are finally totally sweet, okay? And when you sweeten the judgment, so then of course, everybody is able to receive the light in the right way. And it doesn't come out, harsh, it doesn't come out tormented, it doesn't come out perverted, it comes out sweetened. That you're able to be a vessel to receive the infinite light. Now, you have to practice this. God willing, we're going to go over each one of the names of the 42 and to try to get into what its meaning is. Each one corresponds to a day of the week, but we say it all the time because we're always involved in elevating. And these, we're participating, we're co-creating by using the vapor of the mouths of this 42-letter name of God to sweeten the judgments. We, we all continue to sweeten the judgments and see the world redemption, baby. World redemption, because that's what we're heading for. Okay, we will stop now. Anybody have any questions? Question. Yes. Just one right. second. Yes. Hello. Okay. Um, just a clarification. Uh, back up on two things. Uh, you said barley compared to wheat. Uh, barley represented anger. You said I, you know, animal food. It's oh, food. So we use we use barley. For, for what reason before you get to wheat? 
for the Omer because we're elevating our the animalistic parts of us. So you get to wheat when you get to Shavuot? Yes, yeah, Shavuot is okay. a wheat. So we when you, right. Now, when you said counting, if a person misses a day on counting the Omer, they don't say the blessing. But the next day, they can say the blessing? No. Really, according to the post game that we follow, that if you, it, now, if you missed a day, let's say you missed that night. Right. For the next day. Okay. You remember the next day, you can say it without a bracha the next right. day. But that night, you can continue saying it with a bracha. Cool. Oh, for the next I didn't want to get into the details of it. So okay. If you did say it that day, you can continue saying it with a bracha. If you did, okay. it, if you totally missed the day, that means already the night of the next day has come and you realize you didn't count at all, at all. So then you can no longer say it with a bracha. Okay, and one last clarification. Seven vapors. Seven yes. vapors. Yes. So when, you said, yes. when you speak, that's a vapor. Yes. There's when a you talk now. Huh? Yes. There when, is a vapor. When you that look comes at down. the lower sphero, that's seven. Are those vapors too? Yes. Each one of those is a vapor. The seven are vapors. So the seven vapors are the, the are they the seven vapors of the lower sphero? Yes. Okay. And when you speak, that's an eighth vapor. No, no, that's called speaking. But there, along with your speaking, there is a vapor that comes out. And as oh, we from the from the sphero. Yes. Okay. Specifically, we're talking about the the, the seventy the, the forty two letter name of God, saying that because those are the those are the real vapors. We're always saying vapor. We're all full of air. But the idea <laughs> here is those forty two letter name of God are the key vapors of the world that give the world its existence. And us saying it, this Kabbalist, he was very emphatic. I said in the last class, we went over with me. He sat for a half an hour going over the words and the meaning of it. He says, you must say it every day. And I have never understood it. And I used to just mumble it, say it by rote. Okay, because I've got other places to go and things to do. And then, of course, I've been trying to uh, get into the meaning of it. That's God willing that next time we'll get into the meaning. Okay. I, you, I didn't have a class last week. I thought you weren't going to be here. That's what I thought you said. I wasn't. Last week I was traveling. Okay. So that's what you mean, the last class we had. Okay. I got it. Last class two weeks ago. I got it. I got it. Okay. Thank you. I'm just a good clarification. Okay. Until okay. so next time, welcome. guys. Keep welcome. practicing. Welcome. Practice. Practice. Thank you. I sent you an email. I sent yes. you an email because I got the email that said the link and the source sheets, but I didn't have an attachment. I didn't have any PDFs. Oh, weird. Okay. I will. It was in a yeah. form, but I'll send it to you again. Uh, and also, um, I think Alan said he didn't get them also. Who um, didn't? But also, <laughs> um, study group in the class. Alan is it? No, I think that's David. Ah, okay. I don't know. Um, it just looked like the the. Oh no, uh, no, you're look right. At, no, look you're in right. the chat. You're right. You're yeah. right. That's that's Alan. And then I was looking for the recording from our last class, and I couldn't find it anywhere. I didn't post it. Maybe I didn't. I'll see if I can find it, and I'll send it to you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Wonderful class. Pleasure. All right. All the best, everyone.